everyone, and welcome to the Web Sling and Comic Book Vault. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Dan. And Dan and I today are finally going to review something kind of recent. We haven't done any recent stuff in a while. Uh, Dan, what Spider-Man thing are we doing today? Today we're going to take a look at Amazing Spider-Man Family Business. This is an original graphic novel that, put, that got put out uh, not too long ago. I don't remember exactly when it came out, but I think it was a few months ago. Uh, this is uh, Mark Wade, James Robinson co-writing, and uh, Gabriel Deloto. Um, I'm not Italian, so excuse me for butchering his name. Uh, it's very, it's very obviously Italian name, but that's what we're, we're taking a look at today. Uh, the first thing I want to mention about this, Dan, is I love, love, love the artwork, and I do too. I have never seen this guy before, and he reminded me a little bit of Lee Bear Mayho. Yeah, he's got that same sort of like painted look going on, but it's it's not as like gritty looking like mm -hmm. Romeo's stuff's got that like kind of edgy darkness to it which is great for things like um he did some variant covers for um Daredevil uh, a while back when Mark Wade was doing it of course he's worked on Batman quite a bit and he did that Rorschach uh, before Watchmen thing and it all fits there but I think Deloto's work um fits a little bit better with Spider-Man because it's it's a little bit more lighter and more fun. Like, he definitely, like, can do shadowy stuff, and, yeah. like, we get to see Spider-Man in the black costume here, which is awesome. That was neat, yeah. There's some stuff in this that, that, that gets uh, a little bit gruesome, especially toward the end uh, where Kingpin just starts wailing on him. That gets a little bloody, right? But but yeah. I, I think with this style, uh, with this, like, really bright kind of painted artwork, and, I mean, like, it's, it's really epic looking. There's some very breathtaking panels, especially some of the stuff in the casino that was the that was the stuff that really got me uh, uh some some of those full page spreads oh, yeah. where you get this amazing detail of like poker chips flying everywhere and uh, that stuff was really cool to me um but like so you get kind of used to oh man this is just kind of a fun but very like 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 kind of majestic looking Spider-Man graphic novel and then all of a sudden there's like there's like something really rough that happens and you're like oh man I didn't expect so it, it so, so like so like that was more impactful because I didn't expect it yeah I agree I mean the, my the scene that stuck out to me was uh, the first time you see Spider-Man when Peter Parker goes to chase the uh, people who are stealing laundry detergent of all things that was so funny when, yeah, when he first lands on top of the uh, truck they're driving, that's just a majestic looking panel. Um, it's just great looking. And um, just all the action in general, I think is great. It's got it's got this like, the book itself, um, it's got this like international spy, uh, Indiana Jones kind of feel to it. Cause we go to like Egypt and Peter Parker's in a tuxedo in a casino like James Bond. Um, you there's know, some there's some Nazism stuff. involved that remind yep. me of Indiana Jones too. Right. So, um, you get all that adventure pulp kind of vibe going on, which was pretty cool, and I think the artwork suited that tone really well. And because we're dealing with a mystery about Peter Parker's parents, I think it's really nice to do a... a, a and I like that it's not just straight up Peter Parker as a spy, because he only does the undercover thing for like five seconds. Like, like yeah. he's still <laughs> mostly just Spider-Man through the whole thing. But I like that, that, that we have that vibe and we get to do, the, you, know, you know, those kinds of fights and chases and have just that kind of atmosphere. Uh, it's nice to do that at least once one time with this character, right? Because that's where his, uh, that's where his family heritage is, and so uh, I was really appropriate if we're gonna do another story that's kind of about his parents, and we'll get into whether or not that was even remotely successful. But, um, but like, if we're gonna do another one of those, uh, wouldn't it be cool to give it kind of this sort of bondish uh, kind of kind of vibe? Yeah, I agree, and it takes Peter Parker out of his comfort zone. Um, yeah. Like, it's not, you know, New York where he knows, you know, everything that's going on, knowing the streets like the back of his hand. It's cool to see him out of his element, and, like, because he lives this, like, extreme double life and he has to be dishonest with people a lot to just sort of keep the identity, you could see him maybe being good at spying, but he's not good at lying. That's kind of the Peter Parker thing. Like, everyone pretty much eventually either figures out his secret identity in the comics or, like, is not very bright, so they don't figure it out. Peter Parker's just not very good at keeping that together. He's no Matt Murdock, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, he's just not very good at lying. Like, I think one of my favorite scenes in here, too, was when he pretends to be French Spider-Man and just babbles a bunch of French-sounding things at people to try to cover his identity. I thought that was hilarious. That was really funny. My favorite moment, at least comedic moment in the whole thing, is when, and this is this is, this is speaking to what you're to what you're talking about, when I. Uh, she tells him to blend in and he says okay and the very next page he walks up to a baccarat table <laughs> and he thinks it's roulette 
<laughs> and, and I, I thought that was really funny. Yeah, that was that was really funny. He's just not not part of that like cultured um, kind of scene either. Like you, you get the feeling this is maybe the first time Peter Parker's ever been to a casino. Like, and he goes yeah. on a private jet and he feels completely out of his element too. Like this world is completely alien to him. Um, and that was kind of cool. Um, it produced a lot of comedic moments. Yeah, some of that, some of that innocence comes out, right? Because I mean, like, like you know, he's he's been through a lot of stuff as Spider-Man, but you know, you get him out of costume, and when he's just kind of acting like Peter Parker, and he kind of just turns into that geeky kid that did science experiments in his room, you know, and he's really <laughs> not ready for this kind of stuff. So there, there's maybe a little bit of an identity thing with that, where we're and I, and I, I like it when Peter Parker's played that way, where it's like if he's in costume, it's easier for him to deal with certain situations than if he's out of costume. Uh, well, yeah, definitely. You know, nat naturally. Um, so the premise of this is Peter Parker maybe has a sister. And then it goes exactly where you think it will. Um, <laughs> and as always, we're gonna we're gonna spoil this. So if you haven't if you haven't read it and you don't want to know, read it first. But um, but yeah, there there's this there's this girl named Teresa, and she and, and she comes to Peter Parker uh, because there's uh, this these uh, scary people after him because he's a Parker and he has DNA they need uh, for something that had to do with his parents. And um, she says, oh, they're after me too. They're after both of us. And I just found out a week ago that I'm related to you and uh, then and, and, and uh, we need to get on a plane to Morocco right now and he's like <laughs> oh okay uh, I don't think we should do that but I guess I have no choice right now so then they do so then they go and um, ultimately uh, it's a big kind of just uh, artifact plot trying to try uh, with Kingpin trying to get his hands on some on some gold and uh, you get to the end and you find out that the whole thing was just a big um, master manipulation uh, uh, kind of plot from Kingpin though I will say some of the manipulation was really good uh, but there's kind of a master manipulation plot from Kingpin to um, kind of contrive this overly complex notion of sh he's got a sister and then uh, we find out that she was just brainwashed, and she actually is kind of a non-entity um, by the end. Yeah. Uh, I gotta, I gotta say, this was a weird experience for me, Dan, because I thought I loved it until the last ten pages or so. Right? Like, did you have that experience with it? The, the experience that I had with this is that it's just too short. I feel like if this was a six-issue arc, we could have spent a more time in this espionage kind of world that Peter Parker's alien to, and yeah. we could have had some discussion about it, like what that kind of world does to people, and especially this girl that's supposed to be his sister and his parents too. Like, what would what would drive these people to need to be in this lifestyle and abandon their child and leave them? Because like it tries to deal with Peter Parker and like the anger he might have at his parents leaving him, and that's of course something that's dealt with extensively and in a completely different way in the Amazing Spider-Man movies than it is in the comics. So he's never really dealt with that kind of stuff all that much before. It's just kind of like, he lives with his aunt and uncle, now the ball's rolling and we can tell stories of this character, in the comics at least. So that's something that I think was interesting to go back and look at, but like, all that we really get is a scene of him like walking around this like bunker his parents used to live in and looking at photos and then he says I'm not angry about this and that's kind of the conclusion of it right you know what's funny about that is I liked that actually yeah I don't know uh, like, I just like, feel like I was fine been more I was fine with that right? I didn't want any conflict about that I liked the idea that this is a thing that he already knew about he's already gotten his he's already gotten over like that's what I that's kind of that's kind of why I fell with it where it's like no we did that already you know what I mean we've already we've already been there and done that, or at least that's what that's what the book kind of makes, kind of kind of goes with. Um, it's it's like it's like okay, he knew this already. He's kind of made his peace with it, and if she really is his sister, like okay, that that would maybe develop some conflict. But I, I guess I guess it was a sympathetic thing for me. I guess I sort of liked that he didn't have any problem with it because he had gotten his mind to a place where he said, you know what, I'm kind of glad that they didn't raise me. Like, I see Ben and May as my parents, and yeah, well, what I'm saying is, from Wade's perspective, I think maybe, and I don't want to read too much into it, but I think maybe he was thinking it would seem like a character regression if suddenly he was upset about it. Uh, no, so, I mean, I don't want him to be, like, you know, sitting in his room, like, crying about it for <laughs> days or anything like that. Like, I definitely, don't get me wrong, I don't want to see that, but, like, yeah. I just felt like it brought up that sort of discussion 
with the, the sister, she comes in and she's like, yeah, I'm kind of angry at these people. I never really met them. No one ever told me who my parents were. And Peter's like, yeah, I've never really thought about it that way before. And then there's no real discussion about that other than her saying she's angry and he's saying he's not angry a couple of scenes later. You yeah. know? I wish there was a little bit more dynamic to that sort the, of uh, um, character thing that they brought up. The well, aspect that, that's of... That's just me. No, I, well, here's the thing. The aspect about it that I think that, that uh, they could have gotten more mileage out of but at the end of the day, it's a moot point because she's not related to him. I, the, the aspect that I think we kind of we could have gotten some mileage out of would have would have been uh, that idea that she brings up of this is the family business, and we, we're we're exploring the family business. Uh, I think you're right in that more pages could have let. Uh, Peter Parker go through a character arc where he learns how to be a spy and he explores his parents through this whole thing so that by the end of it he f he feels like he understands them more because he's gotten better at the thing that they used to do that would have been where I would have gone with it if, if we were going to actually explore more of something in this a as it is I thought that we spent enough time with the ideas that they chose to do because it's mostly just an adventure thing it's just that they made me like her, and then at the end she's not who I thought she was, so it doesn't matter. Like I, I guess, I guess at the end of the day, I felt like the whole thing was kind of just just novelty. It was like, okay, here's some things we really want to put in a book. Now, don't get me wrong, the writing in this is fantastic from a dialogue perspective, and the plotting yes, I agree. and the 100%. plotting is nice and tight. But you get to the end of it, and it just feels like it kind of doesn't matter. There's there's a little bit of like. Uh, wink wink nudge nudge sort of ending that's teasing us and I don't understand what that is and we can talk about it here in a second but like I think it wants you to think it wants to downplay that at the end by saying don't worry this actually will mean something later but I don't trust that and I didn't understand that ending um, but like but like uh, it, it seemed like there was a laundry list Dan it was like okay we want to do more Peter Parker parent stuff cause there is another movie coming up that's about that uh, that, 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 that was the first thing. The second thing was, wouldn't it be fun to see Black Costume again? We haven't seen that in a while. Uh, and three, wouldn't everybody love to see this guy get to draw Spider-Man? That was that was the book, you know. You know, like, like and yeah, I mean, like, I really enjoyed that. But then I got to the end, and I just wanted there to be more to it. And I, and most importantly, it was predictable in a bad way. Uh, all the way through, I kind of thought I knew where it was going, and was hoping that that I, I would be that, that my expectations would be subverted because this is Wade, and he does that to me all the time with Daredevil. And then I got to the end of it, and yeah, it was exactly what I thought. Yeah, I mean, I, the difficulty of it with me is kind of the mi missed opportunities that it has. Like, I kind of wish, I'm, I'm with you, like, the, the his sister character, Teresa here, seems like a really competent spy, and, I mean, that's all I really know about her, that she's a competent spy, and she's kind of angry about her background and doesn't know a whole lot. Like, that, I don't know, I didn't really get a huge handle on her character other than her being generally kind of likable because she was competent. But as and, it went along, I felt like she and Peter started to develop a bit of kind of a sibling dynamic and I was enjoying their banter and um, like 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 they, they would start to have like like tiny little quibbles like brothers and sisters do I, I there was a part of me that actually wanted her to really be a sister yeah that's what I wanted it but to then I didn't because we have enough retroactive origin stuff right now you know what I mean like like I like I didn't need Peter Parker's background to be any more soap opera than it already is but if you make me love that character I'll go along with it and they, they got pretty close for me yeah I mean I, I just wish there was a little bit more there I'm with you like the dialogue and the banter is very well written but she doesn't really have a whole lot of dimension as a character for me other than being angry and being confident and being banterous like Peter but was. may I suggest that she would have if she was actually his sister I, I, I like, yeah, like I feel exactly. like that, I feel that's like that's what I'm trying to say and yeah and, uh, yeah and the other thing that uh, I re hadn't really thought of this until you brought up the title in relation to the family business that this is all connected to, I think the choice of Kingpin as a villain in this is inspired, and they didn't really do with anything with it at all. No. He's a mafia boss. Yeah. Uh, he's a guy that runs a family business. That's kind of why he does this whole scheme, is to kind of get his, his mafia operation back off the ground. Um, there's a whole background with that guy and his wife and how tragically that went as seen in Frank Miller's Daredevil. And not that they needed to like, you know, reference that ad nauseum, but like, <laughs> um, I wish there was more discussion of uh, how the parallels between 
a spy who gets manipulated by a greater authority and doesn't know everything that they're doing when they go into a mission. You, you know, the compartmentalization that happens you know, in the Winter Soldier movie and stuff, that, that happens in real life too. Plus, you know, Kingpin, he's a master manipulator. That's what he does for a living too. So comparing and contrasting that, I think would have been interesting, but nothing really happens with that either, you know? Also, um... I, I, I would I would also say that there's a par that there's a potential parallel that, that could have been done with the notion of what is family really where mm. we have we have the you know mafia family and they're not a real family but they can they can kind of justify a lot of things they do by saying this is for the family almost in the same sort of corporate way as saying it's just business and then you get over to um, and mixing business and family right and then and then and then, and then you get over to uh, Peter Parker's family they're an actual real flesh and blood family but are they really you yeah, know exactly. and, and so like 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 you so you could have you could have paralleled like a real family with a not real family and then ultimately come down on neither of them is a real family like that would be an interesting thing to do but Dan this book wasn't about exploring ideas right like no it wasn't and that's the frustrating thing about it. I feel like if this was a six issue arc, I know Mark Wade and James Robinson, they're both very competent writers and, ca and are capable of exploring ideas like this. And um, it's just disappointing to see the book so well written and just miss the idealistic opportunities I feel like it could have had. Like if this was a six issue comic book arc, I feel like it would have been fantastic. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, you're right. It's only it's only the length of like three, three and a half. Yeah. Um, at the same time, though, I don't feel like just length would have solved the problem. I feel like you have to have a different ending. I feel like even if even if it was two or three more more issues of length, you'd get to the end, and I think you, we would still feel very disappointed by where it all goes at the end, right? That that, that like that like it was just a mind control thing, and I would have found uh, the way everybody conveniently doesn't know what they need them to not know, so that this doesn't actually affect anything. Like 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 that was that was really contrived, and it would have felt just as contrived at 150 pages as it did at 93. Yeah, I mean it would have, but at the same time too, like for me, I wasn't invest as invested in the relationship between Teresa and Peter as you said you were. So for me, one of the disappointing things for me was it acts like, oh, they they still have this connection even though she's not really a sister, and that didn't work for me. Like okay. if they had enough time to flesh out their relationship, where I felt like. Even if they're not related, these two could be like best friends. I would have bought it, but I never really got that uh, sort of um, feel from them. I just got the feel that they were both thrown into a situation they didn't want to be in, and then they bantered at each other. You know, like that's that's just what I I, I thought was there for me personally. No, that's totally fair. I think the distinction I'll make with with with, with my experience with it is that um, I. I, en I I enjoyed them together. I, I guess I guess more than you did. But by at the end of the day, when I found out that it really did all go where where I thought it was going, I was sort of glad they didn't do any more with it. Because yeah, yeah. if they had, it would have been a really disappointing. Um, but it, but it's weird at the end. Like we, we let's talk about the end yeah, because I yeah. think that's the main issue that both of us. Oh, it is, have. and that's what's so weird about it is that I loved everything about it until the end. Yeah. See. The ending is very strange because we get this like a series of scenes that seem to confirm and deny that she's related to him at the same time. Like we get at the, in, on page one, it introduces this mind control guy that the kingpin breaks out of prison, and you're like, okay, the sister that Peter Parker's never met before, and weird stuff is happening. The mind control guy's doing things. I guessed it from page one, so the twist was really obvious, and that's that's half of what disappointed me. The other thing was like. I said about the relationships, but the ambiguity of the end is really strange too. Like, we have the the, the former aide of the Parkers like examining her DNA, and he goes, "Would you look at that?" And we don't really know what that means. And she like gives a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to even Peter when he walks away, and like calls him. And it's and, mixed with a two-panel flashback of the yeah, parents. Yeah, a two-panel flashback with the parents where Richard and Mary talk about maybe having a second kid. And, but knows? it's not telling us anything that we didn't know already because because we were all, because we were already told earlier on by that guy. So apparently he was not an unreliable narrator. I kind of went through that scene going, "Okay, how much how much can I trust in what this guy's saying?" Yeah, right? exactly. I um, thought maybe he was in on the scheme too. Yeah, and and then and then you get to and then you get to the end and you have a flashback that just confirms what you knew already. And so I mean maybe that's what it was, it was trying to do. Maybe it was just confirming that he was actually telling you the truth and so but the thing is them saying okay we wanted to 
That doesn't tell you anything. I would have, if, if it was me and if, if, if uh, I mean, if it wasn't supposed to be ambiguous, this is the thing is, that I'm not sure if it was supposed to be ambiguous as it actually came off as, right? Like, if, if it were if it were me, I would have had the flashback be, uh, hey, I'm pregnant a second time or something, right? Like... Well, she does put her hand on her stomach, but I don't know what that means. Like, has she already had Peter and she's pregnant with another person? Or you brought up the twin thing. Like, maybe she's pregnant that's what with I thought at first. and they've already named Peter and they know it was a boy or something? See, that's like, what you know. I thought at first, but then I looked at it again and I... Because I, I looked over that scene three or four times trying to figure out what in the world I was looking at. Yeah. And... <laughs> And uh, if, if, if memory serves, the context of it was um, him saying, someday we will have children in general. So, like, they, they haven't had any yet at all. I thought he like, kind of name-dropped Peter and was like, it's going to be the three of us or something like that. Yeah, he says three, but I thought before that it was like, um, it was like someday when we have time we'll actually start having kids. Like, I thought that's what the context of it was. I guess I need to look at it again, because I, I still, like, even the way it was worded was pretty ambiguous. Yeah, either um, way, it's just really strange. Yeah, was, it was, I think it was maybe strange. the thing is, they're trying to leave you on a cliffhanger for it to maybe come back for another one if this sells well, and they can kind of explore those ideas more, and honestly, I hope they're able to, because there was enough enjoyable things in this that I would really like them to do a follow-up. That would, that would be fun. Here's the thing, though. I don't think they could possibly be saying, maybe I'm wrong, that she is actual, that that that, that person was actually Peter Parker's sister, because that would be incredibly contrived. Unless Kingpin somehow yeah, that's knew true. about it. You see what I'm saying? That, that wouldn't work. I mean, okay, so there's no family re resemblance and stuff, whatever, but he seems to just kind of pick a CIA agent of the right age out at random and doesn't even care what she looks like because... Well, actually, let, let me pose this question. Okay. Maybe, maybe there's something in the book that kind of contradicts it, but maybe at the end, she actually is his sister and the mind control guy makes it so she can't see the photo anymore. Everyone makes it look like her hair changes and... Um, and Kingpin's trying to play them against each other or something. Maybe because, you know, yeah, maybe it's like a long con or something, and he's got yeah, this, big, he's this big end game. Like, yeah, but the but thing then, is, like, unless you're... First of all, that's pretty convoluted. And second of all, if you don't know if you're going to get another one of these or that this is going to ever pay off someplace, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be pretty... It would be pretty difficult for the Kingpin to, like, know that they were related in the first place if she didn't know, right? <laughs> also, also, um, was it my imagination, or did they uh, purposefully make her look like Gwen Stacy? She looked like Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy as she was, like, morphing into herself in those, like, three panels. Like, once like... she became herself, she looked almost spitting image of Gwen Stacy. Like, like if, yeah. you, like if you, uh, if you did a modern Gwen Stacy and you drew her, and you just drew that character, you wouldn't think twice about it. She looks like Gwen Stacy, so... Yeah, she, she did. That and was weird. And transition panel where she has red hair, too. I was like, oh, it's, it's Mary Jane. That, that was, was kind of That was weird. Yeah, and so it's like, what are you saying with that? Because... Peter Parker thought it was his sister, but now you're making her look like... I mean, that that seemed like it was on purpose. It's like, now yeah. we're making her look like Peter Parker's love interest. I don't want to read anything into this book, because I don't think it's really about anything at the end of the day. I, I, that's not fair. It's not about nothing, but you know what I mean. Like Right. It, it's not... A, like you said, it's not about exploring the ideas. It's kind of the ride. And yeah. the ride is pretty fun. Like, Wade yeah. writes a fantastic Spider-Man. He writes a fantastic Kingpin. All of the characters... Um, and I don't know... It, it credits Robinson and Wade as co-writers, so I don't know who did what, like, who wrote the dialogue, who plotted, or if it was a complete and 100%, like, dual collaboration where they were both writing dialogue and playing off each other. Yeah. I don't know how the relationship worked, but um, it feels tight, like a Mark Wade kind of dialogue thing. And I thought it, so, too, and I just wish that we could get Wade to come in and do a Spider-Man thing like this uh, that that is, like, like as thoughtful and challenges me the way that his Daredevil does. That's that's what I want to see at some point. So, I mean, like, no, I, you know, this was fun, but I wanted more from it at the end of the day, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like, he's written Amazing before when they had the rotating um, cast of writers in the book when it came out three times a month before Slot took over full time. But it was kind of the kind of thing where he never got to have full control over the book. It was kind of like a writing room kind of situation. So you, it, it was never like, you know, a sustained, like, long form story that Mark Wade just got to tell, like he's doing with Daredevil. You'd have, like, other people coming in and been doing, like, you know, little arcs and stuff like that. So, yeah, on the uh, other I'd hand, I'd love to see him just have Amazing and run. You know, do whatever he wanted with it. That'd Me too. Awesome. 
On the other hand, I will take, like, like really, really good dialogue and, like, everybody has their own voice and sounds like a unique person even over, like, incredibly well-plotted and, like, deep and makes me think kind of stuff sometimes just because, like, I read this dialogue and it's infectious and it makes me go, oh, yeah, that's how you write dialogue. You know what I mean? So, like, so like uh, you know, there's not... There, there's there's plenty to like about this, but like I don't know, it's it's it, it was disappointing at the end. That's that's my complaint. Yeah, I, I agree. And like, you know, it's for me personally, like I'm not a huge fan of Dan Slott's stuff that he's been doing with Amazing since he took it over full time. So this was kind of a, ref, a refreshing thing for me, where like I got to you know read Peter Parker as I imagine the character sounding and speaking and acting, um, like on characterization like from the first scene where peter parker tries to go get money out of an atm and he calls himself the dumbest genius alive i'm like all right we're here this is peter parker yeah i'm loving this you know um it, it was it was very nice to, to to read something like this at the time especially when uh we didn't know that peter parker was coming back this was came out during like the, the maybe the tail end of the superior era before we knew peter was coming back so i was really excited for this and um I have to say I wasn't wholly disappointed. I think I paid like a little bit too much for it. This is like a twenty-five dollar book new, so I yeah. think for twenty-five dollars that it's not long enough and it's not as satisfying enough. But if you can get this for like you know a discounted price eventually, I'd give it a read. It's not bad. Um, uh, you get to see Kingpin in a Hawaiian shirt. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it won't be remembered. It's very no, superfluous, no. but um, you know I'm glad I read it. I, I'm glad I looked at it. Like the the the, the, the art's the best part. So. Yeah, definitely. Like, if uh, Deloto, and I would imagine because this artwork is so excruciatingly detailed and beautifully painted, he's not able to sustain a monthly schedule. But if that was at all possible, that this team on Amazing Spider-Man, like, monthly would be the greatest thing ever, right? Yeah, this is, this is the last thing I'll say, but man, the attention to detail from him, like, like, like there's, there's one panel where uh, Kingpin has, like a bloody rash across his arm just mm. just and it, it's not even recent it's just he's lived the life he's lived so that's just like what he looks like it's just like a normal thing and um just that that kind of attention to detail um i was i was really impressed with oh i agree like the opening scene where he takes um the mind control villain out of prison and you see like that the thing with that guy's powers is like he um he can alter like what people see in, in their in their consciousness so he can like their moods and attitudes like affect his psyche and he he's put in this like really desolate prison overseas where like they don't even like feed people and stuff it's terrible terrible conditions and you like the first time you see him the way he's he's presented by the artist here his face and like everything about him is just so like run down he looks he looks terrible in the best way possible, you know? <laughs> His name was Mentallo. Have you ever yes, heard yes, of this character? I keep calling him Mind Control Guy. Have I'm you sorry. ever heard of this character? I, I mean, I know he's pre-existing, but to my I, knowledge, he's he's not someone I'm familiar with. Yeah, I assumed he existed already, but he was new to me. I was like, that's hilarious. I'm sure somebody at Marvel was like, yeah, Mentallo. Cause I we can't we can't have a robot guy named Metallo because they have that at DC so we're gonna have this mind control guy called Mentallo and then all the DC people will read it and be like oh man there's an N in there for a minute I did not understand this character see I was hoping it was gonna be Ringmaster the guy that has the pinwheel hypnotizing thing on his top hat and he's like a circus ringmaster it's he's the coolest villain ever um, the Batman yeah. equivalent to that is Crazy Quilt. Crazy Quilt. Yes. Wow, I've never heard of him. That you was... haven't? Crazy Quilt has almost the exact same thing going on. <laughs> oh, I love goofy villains. Yeah, but like... I'll send I'll send you some pictures of Crazy Quilt, Dan. Yeah, definitely. Like, <laughs> I might have read something with this guy before, but I just he's not memorable enough that I would have remembered in the first place. And he dresses up like a different supervillain in this anyway, so it's not like he has a costume that you can remember. <laughs> That's a good point. Well, uh, everybody, thanks so much for watching. We sure appreciate it. And uh, Dan, uh, I'm glad we read this. It was worth reading. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we were able to take a look at it. I was curious what you would think of it. And, um, you know, I kind of wanted to take a look at it, too, to review something relatively current, because we haven't done that in a while. Yeah, and I miss it, man. we got to get back to some recent story arcs, because there's a bunch of stuff that we just never got to. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, whenever the next arc of Amazing Spider-Man finishes, whether it be the thing in the past or the new one um, set in present day, we should take a look at that possibly. Sure. Um, I know most of the time we don't have a lot of great things to say about that book, but you've been saying that you've really been enjoying the past story, and I've only read the first two issues, I... and I do have any problems with it so i really like it so yeah <clears throat> yeah so I, that's something i'd like to take a look at eventually when it finishes um amongst i'm not sure if we read any of the same books other than amazing and thor now but um just because yeah, you're, you're, you're not buying as much yeah yeah exactly exactly um well, it'll be interesting to see like what the lead up to girl thor will be because that's happening now I guess. <laughs> we'll see what that's at the yeah well anyway uh well thanks again <laughs> folks for watching we sure appreciate it i'm captain logan i'm dan